Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to your second class for your um, violin and cello instructions. So in this class, we are going to go over the parts, the names of your instruments. Now, the reason why that is important is um, in the in the upcoming future, um, when we learn how to hold your instrument, how to play your instrument, I will be naming the parts. I'll say, put your hand on the neck, grab the, your instrument by the neck, um, uh, put your chin on the chin rest, so you have to know what parts I'm talking about. Okay, so let's get started. So right here, I have a violin. Um, let's go ahead and go to our overhead view. So we're going to be using the violin as a demonstration for both the violin and the cello because they both have the exact same parts pretty much with a few minor differences that I'll go over, okay? So let's go ahead and start up at this end. That's the top and that's the bottom of the instrument. So we're going to wait, uh, work our way from the top to the bottom, okay? Let's just go ahead and pretend that this is a person, right? So you have the head area right here. Here's the neck and here's the rest of the body. So we're gonna start from the head area. Right here, this little swirly bit, and that is called the scroll, S-C-R-O-L-L. -L. Now don't worry, I'm gonna go over a lot of terminologies, but at the end I will show you a slide with all of these vocabulary listed on it. Um, so for now, just go ahead and pay attention uh, to what I'm saying, and then we can all look at that chart later. Next, we have our pegs. We have four pegs right here. These pegs are responsible for adjusting the tensions on these four strings. Now, this area right here in the middle where the pegs goes into, and that's called the peg box, okay, peg box. Right here, there is a little piece of wood that pops up where all the strings are tied into here. That is called a nut, N-U-T, nut, okay? And then this area of the violin where it gets a little bit thinner, that is called the neck. So you will always hear me say, go ahead and grab your instrument by the neck. And this is what I mean. This is the easiest part to grab. So therefore, you won't have an accident. You won't drop or break anything. Okay. Now on top of the neck, this board that goes all the way along right here, that's called the fingerboard because eventually we will learn to put our fingers up here to play it. So fingerboard. All right, moving on to this area, this little round area here at the top, that is called the upper bout. Bout is spelled B-O-U-T, bout, upper bout. All right. And then right here in this middle area where the violin kind of gets a little narrower, the violin and the cello. Okay, this is called the C bout, the center bout, B-O-U-T. So C bout, uh, a joke I like to think about is a seat belt in your car. So when you get in your car, you have to put on your seat belt. That might help you remember this part's name. So C, the letter C, and then bout. And then towards right here, this bottom area, that's the lower bout, lower bout, B-O-U-T, so lower bout. All right, let's go ahead and go to these four things here. I know you know what they're called. They're called the what? Very good. They're called the strings. So we have four strings on this instrument, okay? Let's go ahead and start from the thinnest one up here. So this will be string one, two, three, and four. So string number one is called the E string, E as an elephant. String number two is called the A string. So A as an apple, so here's E, here's A, here is D as in David, okay? G as in girl, so G string. So E, A, D, and the G string. This will be very important later on. I will say pluck this string and you have to know which string we're plucking, okay? All right. Going along right here, we have these interesting looking shape, these holes right here in the letter. They kind of look like an F. So we call these the F holes, F holes. We have two of these right here. And I know you can't see it in this shot, but when you get a chance, you can do it at home. If you look through the F hole right here, you will see a little tiny stick inside, okay? That's being wedged 
between the top and the bottom part of the violin. Okay, and that is called the sound post. The sound post is very important. It's got two functions. Okay, number one, it amplifies the sound that the strings make. So the string will vibrate, goes into the bridge, and the sound post will vibrate in there and it amplifies the sound. Uh, function number two is there is a lot of tension that's being put on the bridge right now because the string is tightened and the string is pressing on the bridge, the bridge is pressing on this top part of the violin, and the sound post kind of also help hold that. So if you ever pick up your violin or cello and you hear the sound post rattling in there, let me know right away because that means we need to get that into the repair shop. You can't use it, okay? Um, if you keep using it, sometimes I've seen that um, this top part of violin will break because the string is um, applying so much force on top right here and there's no sound post holding it. All right, now this part, I kind of just gave away the answer. This little part up here is called the bridge, kind of like the bridge over a river. Okay, so bridge, so that's the bridge. And also you don't want to ever touch the bridge because the bridge is not glued in. So if you whack it too hard, it will actually come off and then you won't be able to use your instrument. It takes a few minutes putting it back. And if you don't do it right, you will also break the bridge. So please make sure you don't touch the bridge. Just leave that alone. All right, getting towards the bottom here. I had these little tiny little knobs. I hope you can see them right here, these tiny little knobs. They're called the fine tuners, fine tuners. So they also adjust the tension of the, uh, of the um, strings. It's just that the pegs, we do most of the adjustments and then we use these to hone in on the final adjustment. These make a little tiny adjustment that helps us get to the final destination where we want. Now these fine tuners are embedded into this piece called a tail piece, tail piece. So we're getting towards the tail end of the instrument. Okay, tail, spelled T-A-I-L, same thing as like a dog or cat's tail. All right, right here is where there are some differences between the violins and the cellos. This part is called the chin rest. So eventually you'll put the violin on your um, shoulder and then your chin will go on top of this. So chin rest. The cellos do not have that because, well, they never put their instrument on their shoulder. The cellos, their instrument always kind of rests on the ground. Okay. Also right here, here's a difference. There's a little button right here. And that on the violin is called the end button because we're coming to the end of the instrument. There's a little button. So end button. A cello does not have that. So speaking about the cello, let me go ahead and pick that up and just show you. Okay. Here's some items we will be talking about in a minute. Not just yet, but they're here to get ready. So here we go. Oh boy, look at how big this is. This is just huge. I want to show you from the front, right? So this is, this is my cello. It's really, really large, okay? All right, so like we discussed before, here is the difference. The difference is right here. You can see there is no chin rest. Also, right here, instead of the end button, you have the end pin. You see this pin? We can just take this pin out. It's really, really long, okay? We can make adjustment, okay? And then right here, we have this little screw we call the end stopper because it will stop the pin from going places. It will lock it down. So that's the difference between the cello and the violin. All right, let's talk about some of these other items that I put up on our little display table right here. Let's go back to our overhead view. Here we go. All right, so for both the violin and cello, we have these items. They are called rosin. So if you can see, it's even on this box right here. Rosin, R-O-S-I-N. Rosins will come in different shapes. Some of them will be rectangular like this, and sometimes they will be round like this. Doesn't really matter the shape. They all have the same function. It also doesn't matter the, um, the color. 
Notice this one has a lighter color and this one has a darker color, so it doesn't really matter. Both of their function is to get your bow to be a little sticky so you can play uh, on your uh, strings. So it will grab your strings as you play. So, but that will be another lesson, how to set up your bow. But that's the basic function of the rosin right here. So we have two different types. All right, now please remember when you're not using your rosin, always put it back in your case and put it away because rosins are very fragile. So if you accidentally drop it, it would break like glass. So, and, and then if you have little chunks, then it's kind of hard to use. So you need it as a big chunk, okay? So these are rosin. And these two pieces right here, therefore are cello. Let's see, cello. Cello players, do you remember what these are called during our last video? Do you remember? Very good. So these two little pieces are called rock stop. Rock as in R-O-C-K, you know, the little pieces of rock you pick up on the floor, okay, or at the park, rock in the word stop, like the stop sign, S-T-O-P, so rock stop. And these help the cello's end pin go into these holes right here, and it helps the cello not slide when they're on a hard surface such as a hardwood floor or um, tiles, okay? So that's what these are for. And finally, we're moving on to the bows. Oh boy. All right, let's see. Can you tell the difference between these two bows? Do you know which one is for a cello and which one's for a violin? Well, here we go. If you take a look at the ends right here, okay? Here we go. The cello, the end right here, which this part's called the frog, by the way, F-R-O-G, like the amphibian, ribbit, okay, frog. The frog area is a little bit bigger for the cello, and for the violin, it's a little bit smaller, but they're gonna have the exact same name. So I'm just gonna use the one for the violin, okay? But here we go. Let's go ahead and start at this end. This is the tip. See, there's a little tip. This is called a tip. And this part up here is called a stick. Stick. And this part here is called a winding. Winding. Okay. And then right here is the adjusting screw, or sometimes some um, people call it tension screw, but it's all the same. So adjusting screw. And then we have the frog, like we just talked about. And then there's this little metal part here, I hope you can see. That is called a ferrule, ferrule, okay? And then of course right here, this part is the bow hair. Now make sure you don't touch the bow hair because we put rosin on the bow hair if you touch it. Now there's not enough bow hair, now you need to spend time putting more rosin on. So don't touch the bow hair, please. Okay. So. There you go. So that's the lesson on the different names of your um, the different names of the parts of your instrument. And you're saying, wait, 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 but you promised to show us a slide. You're right, I did. So let's go ahead and show you that slide right now. So here's the slide right here. So this is a picture of a cello because you can tell there's no chin rest right here. So no chin rest. So that's a cello. Okay. Going from the top, we have our scroll. S-C-R-O-L-L. -L. We have our pegs or tuning pegs. We have the nut. We have the neck. We have the fingerboard. The strings. We have the C belt. Now they didn't put upper belt here, but you know since we just talked about that upper belt. There are the F holes. There is the bridge. There is the fine tuners which is on the tailpiece, and you have the end stopper for the cello and the end pin for the cello. And moving over here to the bow that we just talked about, that's the tip. This is the stick, this upper part here. This is the bow hair. This is the frog. And they didn't put ferrule, but ferrule is that little metal piece here. And this part towards the end, right before the, the screw, the adjusting screw, the tension screw, is the heel, okay? 
Now, let's show you a different diagram. Here's a diagram of a violin right here. So once again, this is the peg box. So in this diagram, they show the peg box, the little box where all the pegs goes into. Here's the peg, here's the nut, here's the scroll, the neck, fingerboard, strings, and then in this diagram, they did show upper bout, okay? Center bout or C bout, F holes, bridge, fine tuners, tailpiece, lower bout, and button, and some people call it end button, but it's all the same. So remember, you can always pause the video and look at those diagrams. Take your time to study them. They're always going to be there, okay? And um, I hope you get to learn all the parts of your instrument. And thank you for joining me for another uh, lesson. And thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Have a nice day.